Hi, in this video I want to show you how to find descriptive statistics in Excel. So as you can see here I have a sample data set. In one column I have the student IDs and here I have the student grades. So using descriptive statistics I want to analyze the student grades. To do this you need to first make sure that the data analysis tool is activated. So you click on data tab and here you have the data analysis tool. If you don't see it, you need to activate it. To activate the data analysis tool, you need to click on file. You click on options. And when this window pops up, you click on add-ins. And here in Excel add-ins, you click on go. You need to make sure that this box is checked, analysis tool pack. And you click OK. Once you activate this, the data analysis tool will pop up here. So I have the data and now I have the data analysis tool which is activated. So to do this, you need to click on data analysis and you need to look for in this list you need to look for descriptive statistics and you click OK. Now the first thing that we need to enter is our input range. Our input range is the data we want to analyze. So here in my case I have the student grades. So I'm going to select all values in the column. So because I also selected the name of the column here the header so I need to check this box labels in first row and then you need to make sure that summary statistics and confidence level for mean and 95 percent are checked and here you see you have three options if you click a new worksheet Excel is going to create a new worksheet and it's going to display the results of descriptive statistics in that new worksheet but as I'm going to display the results in the current worksheet I click on the first option and here I click on one of the cells here where I want the data analysis results to be displayed so I selected the cell E6 press enter and now I click OK as you can see, Excel automatically displays the results of descriptive statistics here. So let me just make it a little bit bigger. So here I have different measures and in front of each measure I have the values. The first one is the mean. The average grade in this class is 74.86. Then I have the standard error. Sometimes when you look at the standard error you're confused because standard error is similar to standard deviation but here you need to understand that standard error tells us how close our sample mean is to the true mean of the overall population. But the standard deviation, it tells us about the shape of our distribution. It basically tells us how close the individual data values are from the mean value, okay? So that's about standard error and standard deviation. Then we have the median. Median is a number which is in the middle of our data. Okay, so 77 is the number in the middle. And we have mode. So mode is the value that has a higher frequency compared to other numbers that we see in the data set. So here it says 81. And that's true. If you look at the data set, we see that 81 here, 81 here, and 81. So we see 81 
couple of times in our data set. You also see 77, but you see it twice. So 81 has the highest frequency. If you don't see any mode, don't be surprised because in some data sets, you don't have any mode. I have already explained about the standard deviation. So as you know, standard deviation basically tells us how each data point is far from the mean. Okay, so this is the average distance of data points. Okay, from the mean. Then we have the sample variance. So sample variance and the standard deviation are also similar, but depending on what you want to do, they have different purposes. One thing you need to understand is standard deviation gives you a value which is in the same units as the mean, but variance, okay, it's uh, the difference is that it's a squared. It's not the same unit as the mean. So if you take the square root of variance, you find the standard deviation. Okay. So the thing is that here, when we want to find the distance of each data point from the mean, sometimes we get negative numbers. So in the formula of variance, Excel automatically calculates, um, uh, the variance, it's going to square all those negative values to transform them into positive values. And sometimes you're getting a big number, which is not realistic. So here, if we take the square root of variance, we get the standard deviation. Then we have the kurtosis. So basically kurtosis is about the tails of our distribution. It basically identifies if the tails of this distribution contains extreme values. So if the number is greater than, than one, it means that the distribution is too peaked. Um, so that's about kurtosis. And then we have a skewness. Okay. So here, that's about, again, the distribution of our data. But when you visualize your data, you want to see whether um, the data is positively skewed or negatively skewed. So if the number of skewness is higher than one, okay, or lower than minus one, it basically tells you that, you know, the data is skewed and, you know, you have the skewed distribution. Then you have the range in your data set. You have the minimum value. So here it tells us that the minimum grade is 48. The maximum grade is 92. It calculates the sum of all grades as well. So here you have the sum of all grades and you have the count. So basically it counts the number of observations in your data set. It tells you that here you have 29 grades, 29 observations. And we have the confidence level at 95%. So this is about descriptive statistics. I hope this video was helpful. Good luck.